Mr. Surf, you count as one of the fathers of the internet. Have you imagined it to be of such great impact for the whole world? Well, I don't think I imagined the scale that this system would ultimately operate on, but when we were designing it, we intended it to be global in scope. And so I think what's most surprising is not the physical size, but the number of applications that have emerged, especially after the mobile telephone smartphone showed up. Millions of applications uh, came along to uh, create new capabilities for everyone. Is there something you would tell your younger self at that time if you had the chance to? So if I could uh, use IPv6 instead of IPv4 you know, so that we didn't have to go through this painful transition to 128-bit addressing, yes, I would have done that. There are also some issues about safety and security in the system, uh, the use of cryptography. If we could have built that in, it's very tempting uh, to have tried to do that, but the technology wasn't available at the time, and so we've had to retrofit a lot of those things into the existing network. Okay, and uh, in your opinion, does the internet, with the possibility of constant accessibility and communication, strengthen social relationship, social relationships, or does it tend to have a negative influence on them? So we're actually seeing both uh, sides of this equation. We're seeing social media being used both for very positive, reinforcing ways, and we're also seeing social media being used for harmful uh, behavior, the spread of inf misinformation and disinformation and the like. So what that tells us is that we have to start using the wetware here to think critically about what we're seeing and hearing in this online environment and rejecting the content which is of, of no value and, and uh, focusing on the content that's of real value. Distinguishing those two takes some work and it's the price we pay for having access to this huge amount of content on the internet. We have to be thoughtful about what we're accepting and rejecting. Uh, absolutely, and when talking about real value on the internet, um, on our platform OpenHPI, we're training people at different kind of life stages. What courses would catch your interest the most? You know, the most important thing that the HPI teaches is systems engineering. There are not enough schools that pay attention to this basic concept of treating things as systems and understanding them as systems. They're complex. They have emergent properties that you don't necessarily predict. This is one of the few schools in the world that pays a lot of attention to teaching people to think in systems terms, and that's why I love this place. <laughs> okay, thanks about that. Uh, next to that, in our Open HPI course about 50 years of internet, participants are discussing about future visions of the internet. What do you expect the internet to look like in 50 years? Well, several things. First of all, the internet will be universally accessible everywhere. Second, I hope we will have solved the problem of making it very useful for people with various disabilities, whether they're blind or hearing impaired or mo mobility impaired uh, or even cognitively impaired. We hope that we will have learned how to make the network useful for everyone. The third thing is that we hope we can make it reliable and affordable and accessible for everyone, especially in areas where today we don't have much internet at all, the rural parts of many countries. So I hope in 40 or 50 years' time all those problems will have been solved and we will be finding the Internet just as normal as breathing in air. Okay, we also hope so, and thank you for the time.